Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In the next few episodes, we are going to talk about creating custom 3D families. But everything in Family Editor begins with a work plane. So it's really important to understand this concept well before we actually start creating 3D families. So today in this episode, we are going to talk about work planes, what are they, and how to set them up. Let's begin. Let's start by creating a new family. I'm going to use a generic model family template. This family template has two reference planes. The intersection of these two planes is going to define your insertion point of your family. If you go into the elevation, you will see that there is a reference level. This is the base level of your family. When you load this family into a project, this reference level is going to correspond to that particular project level. Let's go back to the reference level here. These two planes already have names. This has center, left and right, reference plane and this particular plane is center front and back. Let's go to the 3D view of this template. From the create tab, the work plane panel, there is a button called show. When I switch this on, it's going to show you the work plane where it is right now. Currently, this is set to reference level. Work planes are basically your X and Y axis planes. Anything you want to draw in Revit Family Editor needs to be drawn on that particular work plane. So for example, if I draw a model line, and I draw a rectangle, you will see that it's going to be on that particular plane. Let's say I want to draw something in the vertical plane. I want to change my X in this direction and Y in this direction. Let's go into the Create tab, Set, and pick a plane. I'm going to pick this particular reference plane. Now, because this plane is vertical, it's not going to be visible in the plan view. So it's asking you which view you would you like to go. Would you like to go in one of the elevation views or a 3D view? Let's go to the 3D view here. Here you'll see now my X and Y plane is now vertical. So if I draw something now using the model lines, that rectangle is going to be vertical on that particular plane. Alternative way of setting a work plane is by using the reference planes which have names. For example, if I go into create tab, set. Now currently my reference plane is set to left and right, but I can change that to center front and back because now I already have the name of that reference plane. Now let's try to draw something and you will see that that is drawn on that particular X and Y planes. Let's go back to the create tab and set our work plane back to the reference level. I'm going to remove everything. Let's take an example of a 3D geometry. I'm going to go back here. Let's say I want to create a tabletop geometry for my table. I'll go into create, I'll choose extrusion and I'm going to create a rectangle on my reference level. I'm going to set my extrusion depth to 25 millimeters. That's the thickness of my tabletop. If I go into my 3D view, you will see that my tabletop is at the reference level. Let's check that in one of the elevation views. So this is my geometry. But in reality, I want my tabletop to be at a certain height. So how do I do that? One option is that I can increase my extrusion start from my work plane to let's say 900 extrusion end at 925. So it will just move upwards in this direction of about this much depth. But alternative way of doing this is by using the work planes. So let's go into create tab and choose a reference plane. And I'm going to create a plane at a certain distance where I want my tabletop to be, which is 900 millimeters. Now, one thumb rule you must always remember that if you are drawing in a plan view, always set your work plane from the elevation. And if you're drawing in elevation, set your work plane in the plan view. So I want to draw the profile of my extrusion in plan. So I'm going to create, set, pick a plane from the elevation. This particular plane, which looks like a line in elevation, is a plane in the direction of a floor plan view. So I'm going to go in the floor plan view where it's going to be visible. So when I draw a rectangle here with 25 millimeters depth, it's going to be drawn on that plane. Another way of doing the same thing is by giving it a name to the reference plane. When I create in this plane, I'm going to call this tabletop. If you're going to use a particular work plane very frequently while creating your family, it's a good idea to give it a name so that you don't always have to come and keep picking that plane for your geometry. So I've already created a plane and given it a name, tabletop. You can alternatively do this in the properties and change the name here. Let's go back to the plan view. 
and I'm going to set my work plane. So now I will find the name of my reference plane in the list here, which is going to make it easier. And I'm going to create my extrusion over here. And I'm going to give it extrusion depth 25 and have a look where it's drawn. So you see here that my plane is already set to the tabletop position. Let's go back to the 3D view. I'm going to increase the depth of my cuboid. I want to show you another way of setting up the work planes. Let's say I want to draw something on the space instead of a particular reference plane. How can I do that? Let's go to the Create tab, Set, Pick a Plane, and this time I'm going to pick a face. So let's say I want to create another extrusion, which is a cylinder. I'm going to increase the depth a little bit. The benefit of using work planes for your geometry is that your geometry is going to be locked to that work plane. Let's say if I try to move this particular cylinder, you will see that it will never leave its work plane. It's always locked to that particular plane. But it does not really mean that you cannot move its work plane after you've created it. For example, if I want the cylinder from this face to this face, how do I do it? I cannot use regular move or rotate tools to, in order to rotate this cylinder from this plane to this plane because it is locked to a work plane. Instead, when I select the cylinder, go to the edit work plane, I have several options which I can choose from. Let's choose pick a new host option. And here I am able to choose another host for my cylinder. Let's say I want to choose it here. So now my cylinder's work plane is going to be defined by this particular face instead of this. So you can also set your work planes by choosing the face of your existing geometry. You can always come back, set, and give it back to its default position to reference level. Work planes can be confusing, but they get easier to understand once you start creating families. In the next episode, we are going to create a custom 3D family of a table where we are going to extensively use the work planes. So please make sure that you subscribe, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.